from Hollywood, California, Metal Mastication with your host, Brett Hogue. Join Brett and his guest, James Pulley of Impelitary, as they make his famous Italian lasagna. And now, without further ado, here are Brett and James. Hi, everybody. Good to see you. We're uh, making lasagna. So, uh, last name Pulley. Actually, my name is James Emilio Pulley, very Italian. Right so, what happened is uh, my mom, great cook. Love you, mom. Uh, my father was diabetic, so she kind of stopped the, the salt and certain flavors. My brother, though, seven years older than me, Frank. Frank took it from Frank. there. And Frank is, all I try to do is duplicate what Frank does, my older brother, Frank. So in this sauce, I start with good San Marzano tomatoes from Italy. And I put in some veal, some pork, and beef, just like they did in Goodfellas. Right here, right like here. Like the prison sauce. Right, so we got some veal. Two kinds of uh, Italian sna uh, sausage. I always say snausage. <laughs> Everybody that knows me say, says that, you know, I say snausage. So we got hot and mild sausage and then beef. And possible. you do this every year for Thanksgiving? But every Thanksgiving. I usually hand them out like, uh, you know, like gift cards to everybody. Yeah, make that's, a few. yeah. We also, I also make a, a lasagna for Thanksgiving, a Brazilian lasagna. That has a layer of bechamel sauce and ham. Oh. That sounds so good. So, yeah. So, maybe tomorrow night we can make yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> as soon as I can get the recipe for the sauce, though, because it smells amazing <laughs> in here. I've done a lot of prep work, made the meat, I've made the sauce. Sauce takes a couple of days. So, sauce is now made. All i got to do is cut up a little bit of parsley, put it in the ricotta. Always use whole milk. My cardiologist would not like this, but I use whole milk, <laughs> both mozzarella and ricotta. You want me to chop the parsley? Uh, that would be great. Chopping parsley. Yeah. Uh, container here. This is where we're going to actually start our lasagna for this evening. Mmm. So we're really lucky. I did bring a nice bottle of Chianti. Mmm. No fava beans. Mm. But that's I'm looking okay. forward to that. No fava beans. So here we go. I'm going to start with, of course, you put a little bit of uh, sauce on the bottom uh, of the pan. Man, that sauce is just beautiful. Can you believe that was six Man. 28 ounce cans of San Marzano tomatoes? Have you been cooking? How long have you been cooking it? Uh, well, yesterday for a few hours, then this morning for maybe three, four hours. Right on. But what you do, you know, you keep adding uh, uh, spices, yeah, yeah. things, and it all it's all about condensing down to something hopefully very uh, concentrated and meaty and yeah. yummy. Now, don't you usually call that gravy? You know, I've had discussions about this with other people back east. No, I, my family, full Italian, all right? My, uh, my mother's family are Ologios. My father's family is, are Pulis from Sicily. Uh, I never called it gravy. Never. Nobody's ever called it gravy. But sometimes I get into a little talk with other Italians, like, what's oh, gravy? Like, so I always start with a little bit of sauce yes, on the bottom. Yes, yes, Let me get the noodles over here. Yes. They're like ready to go into the oven, but yeah. I still, I still like to kind of soften them up. I see that. How do you, I, don't I, trust use the, that. I use the oven ready too. How, how do you soften that. those up? Um, I get a platter like this yeah. and I have a pot of boiling water all day long and I put two or three pieces in. I put boiling water on and I wait and I uh, test it and then I put them on here. I so, see. Um, I don't call me traditional, I, I don't know, but I don't trust the... The whole idea of the oven ready noodles maybe they work maybe they don't i've never tried them yeah. i never saw my mom use them well um, yeah i wouldn't think so yeah my dad never did either it's in your heart knowing that i created this from flour and eggs and all this but i'll tell you what when you go to a, a supermarket you buy this for a dollar 89 it's nobody knows now if i had something really really special going on this is very special by the way but <laughs> even my my godmother, Katerina Puli, she never, she never made pasta. Yeah, no. Right? Yeah. Everybody just, you know, you buy it. It's so much easier. You're right. You know, I had a very, very important role in three different restaurants. Yeah? I washed dishes from the time I was 11. All right, so I started delivering newspapers at 9. By the time I was 11 and 12, I started working at restaurants doing dishes, right. which I know was... Totally illegal with the labor laws. Right. Uh, but I would work at, there was one really, really fancy restaurant I worked at called the Windmill in Easton, Easton, Pennsylvania, where I'm born and uh, raised. And I would wash dishes there. 
And uh, just being in that atmosphere, seeing some good chefs and, and like the service industry there was really eye opening. But yeah. I wash dishes. Where did you get your love of cooking from? That's a good question. I would say from I love eating and I love cooking, but most of it was probably from my brother, my brother Frank, yeah. because he would take my mom's recipes and, and you know, kick them up a notch and, and I'd be like, Frank would be like, uh, it's Easter, we're going to have lasagna. I'm like, okay, I'm like, Frank, holy f this is this is amazing, best I've ever had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and that would be me at like 12 or 13. So then I was like, all right, this is, this is fun. And then I would start to try things and um, I just always loved cooking. I love being in the kitchen. I love the, the prep work, the uh, figuring out what ingredients are best, researching it, things like that. And just making some, making some, it's like music to me. A lasagna is like music. It's, it's like you put all these different things together, chords, you know, notes, yeah, whatever, yeah. and you put it together for someone to enjoy. And when the first couple of times you'd present it to a family and say, Oh, James made the lasagna. Oh, oh cool. And they're like, James, holy, this is really good. So when that happens, you're just rewarded. It's just like music. When somebody says, wow, that song is really good. Just like yeah, the, yeah. the, yeah, just like yeah, the, yeah. the food, it keeps you going. You've been in Impelitary now for 30 years, like since 93. A little over 30 right? years, yeah. Okay, so take me back to that audition. How did you, how did you end up in that band? Uh, Please tell me it was a Brian May story and you answered the postcard. <laughs> Something very similar, very similar. So uh, back in those days, there was a magazine called Music Connection, and I would buy it, and there'd be all these album reviews and all these band reviews. It didn't matter. I would go right to the last two pages. There'd be auditions. And it was Chris and Pelletieri, Rob Rock, looking for a bass player and drummer, call this number. And that's really how it started. Had so you heard I, of him before? Truthfully, no. No? Okay. Truthfully, no. Okay. At the time, I was in Musicians Institute, and I had a lot of music around me, but I wasn't familiar with Rob and Chris. But I got the tape. I called their management company. I got the tape listen to it, learn the songs. And I'm like, this is, this is really cool stuff. I really enjoyed it. So then I went to the audition. It was at Mates rehearsal in North Hollywood. And I went hours before and I just was in the parking lot and I could see bass players going in and out. And I went up to the door. I'm like, you hear some of the bass players and they're doing like really fast stuff like Chris and hammer ons and stuff. And you know, I don't, I don't play like that. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do the best I can. And when uh, it was my turn to go in, um, I just played with good tone. I was loud, played with good tone. And basically, I just played bass. And I think that's what they were looking for. Because when you got a guy like Chris and Pelletieri that's out in the stratosphere, you need a rhythm section that's going to hold that down. So I just played basic, good tone mostly root notes, you know, stuff like that. And I think that's what they really liked about me. So when, when we do work on music and we're going to record a new album and I hear what he's doing, I'm like, Chris, you want me to play that line with you? He's like, or, or, you know, we would like bounce off on that. Some things you can tell. And if you listen to the last couple of albums, you can tell that there's some places where you got to lay back and there's some, uh, riffs that need more of a, uh, uh, attention and I would play along with that so yeah, yeah I know how he writes I can hear where it's going I kind of know I mean sometimes I'm thrown way off in the left field which is great because that inspires me to do something new but for the most part uh, yeah I know I kind of know where he's going sometimes I hear certain changes like okay I, I'm ready for that and I know what to do uh, but for me the inspiring thing are the different drummers yeah I wanted to talk to you about that you played <laughs> Like I, I mentioned to Chris too, but they're, you're the rhythm section, okay? and you've worked with some amazing drummers. Yes, I have. Uh, just yeah. amazing. And now we have a new one mm -hmm. on the new album in the studio. Can you tell us who this new drummer is? Well, Paul Bostoff 
Uh, known for Slayer and Testament. He's an amazing uh, drummer. <laughs> now, if that ain't metal, nothing is. Oh, man. <laughs> can't wait for this new album. Okay. I can't either. So, can't you, either. you worked, with, he was in the studio, so you guys yep. were actually in the same room. Yep. yep. Right, playing off playing each with other. Him. Mm -hmm. Okay, how'd it go? How'd it mm -hmm. work, man? How it, was the vibe? It was great. It was great because, uh, I'll tell you, really, the, the writing process, a lot of times, oh, yeah, let's. Yeah, we got to mix some this. of this up. Okay, we're gonna do some of this while you're while, while, while you're, you're talking. Yeah, you need more. So we would, uh, you know, the writing process is Chris pretty much does a lot of his writing with a drum machine, which is more like a metronome for him, but it gives him ideas of of what to play with. So whole milk, and yeah, I don't have any. That's okay. So the difference is sometimes. It's Italians, easy. man. It's on the hands. Right? On the hands. There, you there, you there you go. Okay. There you go. So we're going to do is, oh, you got that going? I got maybe twice more? as much. Okay. Twice as much. We'll we get said that a going. third of that. But see, I taught English for a reason. So, <laughs> so um, what was going on Paul. with Paul, Paul was yeah. sometimes he would say, well, I got something different than the, 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 the drum line that you, you came up with. Can I try this? And every time he did that, it was better inspiring uh just great great it, it brought the the songs up even more so that's the the only thing i, I can really say about paul is he yeah. would improve the songs all right so the guy that was on stage with us at the metal hall of fame was mr sean culligan great guitar player i've worked with him for many many years he's actually our rhythm guitar player in the uh acdc tribute band that i'm in called Bonfire, oh. and but he does a lot of things. He is jack of all trades, great guitar player. He is like a nut about tone and and just playing the right thing. He's an encyclopedia too. Yeah, like if yeah, you yeah. ask him, hey, what guitar player was on this album? He'd tell you. What amp did he use? He'd tell you. Oh, so man. what was his volume and tone control? He would tell you. He He's a nerd as far as really knowing and understanding and appreciating 60s and 70s guitars. Oh, I'd like to talk to him then. Yeah. And I don't mean yeah. nerd in a bad way. Right, right. I mean no, that yeah. in the best way. <laughs> I love that man. Sean Culligan is an amazing, amazing guy. Hey, yeah. just for fun, let me add something there. All right. So sometimes uh, regatta like can be yeah. a little bland and yeah. it can be a little, you know, you get a mouthful of it. I try to make it interesting. So I put a little parsley, fresh parsley, little uh, Reggiano grated cheese in there. Now, as far as the prep work, you should know I bought a five pound block of mozzarella. I cut it in quarters. Three quarters I would uh, make into, um, I'll show you. I'll show you. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. So what you do is you got to shave it into thin slices like this. This is how you get the stringy stuff. So when you pull a piece of lasagna out, you saw the commercials. Uh, yeah. You pull it like when you have Olive Garden. Yeah. Get a slice, get the stringy stuff. Right. You gotta do it like this. You don't want to shred it. And don't buy shredded cheese. Please don't buy shredded cheese. But for the last quarter, I got shredded. I, I made the last quarter shredded because that goes on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just goes on top. Yeah. That's right it. On. Right That's on. Right on. That's it. Who doesn't love this stuff? Yeah. Right oh, that looks. Uh, oh. Good Lord. Oh, that is good. Oh, oh yeah. So now we got the okay. ricotta yeah. with the parmigiana. Yeah. Oh, nice job. Well, you say that completely differently than I grew up saying it. I got to go with your Italian, though. That's how my uh, godmother always said, ricotta. Yeah, ricotta. I got to take your word for it. I always start with a layer of ricotta. Yes, yes. Because I think it's a state law. You have to start. Ricotta. 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 It's a ricotta. Okay, so it's like a G, not a C. Ricotta. Okay, ricotta. Okay, I can do that. But you got to use the hands. It's Italian. Ricotta. So, yeah. yeah, you have yeah. to speak. Ricotta. Yeah. You have to use your hands. <laughs> exactly. You, right. You've heard that joke, you know, how do you keep an Italian quiet? Uh, tie his hands. Tie his hands, hands. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that's so true. <laughs> All right, so we got some of that going. I still like to put a little more... Um, yes, yes, whatever. A uh, little more cheese on there. Just because, you know why? Because I have a whole lot of it. This I grated by hand. This was well, and you can never have too much huge, cheese. Telling you sauce and cheese? Are you telling telling me what? So uh, that's where this came from. 
This was a big square, a big triangle yes, I got, yes. and uh, hand hand did it. Where did you get this? Did you get this stuff at an Italian market? Did you get it at Ralph's, Gelson's? An Italian place called Costico. Ah, oh, there we it's go. Italian. Oh, Costico. Costco. Costco. Okay. Costico. <laughs> okay, they have. They do have very authentic Italian stuff. I they have, do. I they do. Shop there before. They you do. can also get a very authentic uh, stuff from all over Europe. They actually, import so. from all over the world. Yeah, they really do. All right, so another layer. I do another layer. Okay, so oh. this is just ground beef? So this is ground beef. It's sirloin and like 80-20 okay, beef yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with onions and garlic. You use, uh, what kind of onion? Yellow, white? Uh, I used white onions. White onions, okay. <laughs> right on. They are different. Onions do taste differently, if you didn't know this. The white, the yellow, and the sweet onions. Mm -hmm. uh, they do taste differently. They cook differently. Uh, so they it is do. important. They do. Have you ever had Cincinnati chili? Just out of curiosity. I have not. No. Yeah. I have not. Yeah. Tell me about that. It's, uh, it was invented by a Greek immigrant. Oh, I like it already. And it's more pasta sauce than traditional chili, right? Ooh. Okay. When, you, oh. when people think chili, they think Tex-Mex, right? Okay? Yeah. And this yeah. isn't like that at all. It's, like I said, it's more of a pasta sauce. In fact, traditionally, you serve it over spaghetti. Wow. And the thing that makes this sauce so unique is it not only has some dark chocolate in it, but it also has a little cinnamon. Oh. Just a hint. Just and my, my wife's father would cook with cinnamon. Yeah, see, in it's sauce. a Greek yeah, it's in your It's a Greek it's thing. It's a Greek thing. Exactly. Yes. It is amazing and the best place is Skyline Chili. I will plug them. Um, oh, okay. They, they are amazing and they actually you can get the Skyline Chili hot sauce on Amazon and that's the only hot sauce you want to use on that chili. Really? Really, yeah, because it just enhances the flavor. It doesn't overshadow. It doesn't power it. It just goes hand in hand. So all these things you're talking about, you're going to make that. And I can try it. Sometime. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So we got two things now. Yes. Got... All right. So this is my favorite utensil. Yes. I love that. Does everything. I just love it. All right. So obviously, I put in hamburger and with the onions and uh, garlic. And now, let's see. I think I have. Did I bring in the uh, the sausage? I got to bring some uh -oh. sausage. Yep. Need some of that. How'd you get to notice about going into the Metal Hall of Fame? How'd that happen? Well, like I start my day every morning. I'm on blabbermouth, ah. drinking my coffee, petting my cat, and uh, there's an article: Chris and Pelletier inducted into the Metal Hall of Fame. Like, <laughs> no way! That's not. I how know you this found guy. Out. <laughs> So I call him right away. I'm like calling him, Chris, what's going on? He's like, yeah, yeah, that's what's going on. It's, it's going to happen. I'm like, oh, cool. And the first thing I said was, do we get to play? Oh, right He's on. like, yeah, I think we're going to play. He, everything was new. Uh, it's like, I think we get to play and all that. So that's how I found out about it. Oh, God, that that's is too funny. And then... Uh, that, that's right out of a Hollywood script. Oh, it is. <laughs> I know. I know. All right, here comes some uh, okay. sausage. This is hot and mild sausage on top of the hamburger okay and i'm i'm assuming these you got these at costco as well or did these come from an italian dough? this came from another italian place called smart and finely <laughs> smart and finely okay very good very good but now, where'd you get the veal <laughs> oh um because i can't it, get any anymore it's a place in thousand oaks they delivered it to me i got the uh, beef tank and the veal I got a, like two pounds of veal. Well, I know the place. My um, dad used to use them. I, God. Yeah. I, yeah. I Wild Fork Foods. Yeah. There Wild it is. Fork Foods. Here in Thousand Oaks. They have everything. They, anything you can find, they, they, it seems like they have it. Right on. Right on. So, do you uh, speak Italian? Do you speak any Italian? Other than mm, cooking? My parents would swear at me in Italian. <laughs> so, I only learned the bad words. Now, were your parents immigrants, or was it your grandparents? Uh, my grandparents. Your grandparents. Okay. So, so I'm you... named uh, James Emilio Pulley. I'm named after Emilio James Elogio, who was, from what I was told, he was born on the ship from Italy to America. Oh, right on. More regatta. More regatta. More regatta. Okay, we just did some more sauce. Okay, little dollops there. I like There's that. There's little dollops. Okay. Yeah, you know, I got to tell you, when I first started making lasagna, I would make everything perfectly pristine. Right. Squared off, everything to the edge. And then I'd go have my brother's lasagna, and it was like chunky and yeah. disproportionate, and it was better. So uh, I'm like, I don't, I don't pay much attention anymore to try to... 
you know, make it more like exact. But I think that's as much as we can do. In okay. This yeah, it looks good to me. My godmother again, Katarina, uh, uh, Katarina okay. Puli. Yeah. Here's what I remember. Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, going to her house. Oh, well, God. I'll tell you what, it would really be um, Christmas oh, Eve. Oh, my God. Yeah, I like that. God, like that, that is amazing. Well, I'd Holy like to say God. I raised the beef, but I didn't. Holy but, yeah, crap. That's look. <laughs> the flavors are so complex. And yeah. wow, what a pop. Oh, I love it. Good. Well done, sir. Well done. Good. Thank you. Okay, Thank so you. Your, your godmother going over to your My godmother. godmother, Katarina. So we would go there for Christmas Eve. We'd go to Midnight Mass, come down after that. You know, and I was 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all, all those years. And we'd get down to her house, which was where my father grew up. So there'd be 30 Italians there. Yeah, yeah. You know, the whole family would be there. And all I remember is her opening up her oven... And it would be like she'd be pulling out stuff from a football field. Constantly, there was food coming out of the oven. All this stuff. And so that was kind of like my first introduction of, wow, uh, uh, you got to feed a family. You got, you got a lot going on. And that always kind of resonated with me, the whole idea that she was constantly making things and putting it in the oven and bringing it out and putting it out to everybody. And it was uh, quite an affair. And I think maybe because I associate that with christmas yeah you know yeah for sure that, that might be the for the, sure. the main reason yeah i would say yeah well, that's that's wonderful what great memories wonderful memories all right so you see we have a lot of ingredients left this is going to be for the three or four more lasagnas i make for tomorrow because it's thanksgiving uh, <laughs> but for now let's top this one off stick it in the, yeah. in the oven okie dokie and we'll have something good so i'm going to top it off with some more of this uh amazing that's fairly well received sauce. Yeah, that's, dude, that's the best bread, bread sauce I've ever had. So, and I was a vegetarian for 20 years. Why? So, no, I'm just kidding. Why? <laughs> Here's the story. Here's the funny story. So, for 20 years, vegetarian. I'm talking like vegan, probably for five years. I mean, pure vegan. Yeah. I'd be out with my guys drinking, and we get a pizza. I'm like, well, we'll get half pepperoni because James doesn't eat, eat meat. So, I'd get this little piece over here, and there'd be a little bit of pepperoni juice on it and right I'm like wow that tastes pretty good and then the next time when you go out i'd be like there's a little slice of pepperoni on mine i think i'll eat that and I'd go, wow this is really so what happened was little by little i was like oh yeah i really 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 like this thankfully i'm very busy recording all the time and that keeps me thinking about what to play how to play okay i have a yeah. little bit of a trigger finger some mornings i wake up and i have to go eh, ah. like that Jimmy Bell, you know what I'm talking about. We, we had this discussion. Oh. It's not bad. My, not. my hands, arms, everything's... Luckily, the other band I told you about, the Bonfire, the uh, ACDC tribute band, I'm playing with a pick the whole night. And we play almost every weekend. Sometimes oh, two, right three now. times a weekend. I see. And it's constantly with a pick for, for an hour and a half, sometimes three hours. So that wow. keeps me going. Okay. So when I get to Impelletieri, I'm so... Uh, kind of excited. It doesn't. It doesn't bother me at all. It really doesn't. I have to remember. That's the one thing. In Pelletier is more um, thought-driven, where you have to remember the changes. Bonfire is more just like physical, churn it out. So that's a good um, a good combination. I yeah, would say. right on. We gotta have some more grated uh, Reggiano Parmigiana on top of here. Why? Because it's some of the best stuff on earth. Because it is written. <laughs> it is written. Make it so. Right? It, it's like when you're, you're laying down watching TV and your cat comes up and falls asleep on your lap. <laughs> you know you can't move. Oh, exactly. <laughs> we just had to give up our tortoise. No, we had really? A tortoise. Really? For a while. I loved our tortoise. Uh, Tortellina. Uh, Tortellina. What happened? Tortellina was like a dog. You have to be home at 3 o'clock, let her out, feed her, make sure she's got everything she needs. You know, we travel. I travel a lot. So either to put it on my wife is always dealing with it, and she's got her own things going on. So dogs and tortoises. Yeah, little, yeah. Cats, my cat. I'll tell you what. Yeah. We leave for a week. We come back, and she's like, oh, you guys again. <laughs> oh, little dried basil can't hurt. Yeah, no, right? never, 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 never. I put this on my Cheerios. <laughs> right? Um, so I did have a fan question to ask. Oh. Uh, his name is Buzz Brown. He is a drummer in Buzzed and Loaded in Seattle. Okay. And his question is industry-related. 
All right. Okay. You've been in the industry forever and you've seen the changes. Okay. So right. how has that affected your ability to make a living in the music industry? Mm -hmm. if no one's buying albums, mm -hmm. no one's buying CDs right. and you get a half a cent per song streamed. Yeah. Yeah. How, how has that affected? Yeah. How has that affected you? What is your take on it? Well, how do you feel about it? From the beginning, well, how do I feel about it? Uh, if I was one of the founders in the metal world where you would make a ton of money from the songs you made, I would probably feel it worse. I've only played live. I don't have, I didn't contribute enough in my history to get like, or be worried about royalties. I mean, there's some, but to be worried about royalties and songwriting, I've never done that. For me, it's been live, 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 and some recording, but getting performance, uh, you know, pay for that. So I haven't felt the big letdown yeah, of, of yeah. all of that. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. for me, I just play live, I record, I get paid for that recording, and I move on to the next one. So it hasn't affected me. But I understand, you know, bands, all the legacy bands out there, you got to just keep playing live, sell merchandise, do what you can. Even these, you know, $200 meet and greet after the show, you know, yeah, hey, they're not yeah. being greedy. That's right. what they got to do. Yeah. I'm just happy to still be playing live as much as I do and to be uh, recording. recording. Yeah, let's get this in the oven. Let's get this in the and oven. we'll talk about your studio work here. Okay. Um, so how'd that happen? Put it on in right in the middle. Right down here? Yep. So how'd you get into doing... Now, Chris referred to you as the Yo-Yo Ma. So I'm assuming... I'm <laughs> he assuming... Did. He did. I'm assuming that means that Yo-Yo Ma does a lot of session work. Uh, he must be highly sought after being the world's greatest celloist. Oh, phenomenal. Uh, uh, he is. I love Yo-Yo yeah, Ma. Yeah, I agree. Love he, him. he is unreal. So how'd you, get in, how'd you get into studio session work? I guess it's still called session work? Yeah, remote recording. Remote session work. work, remote recording. Okay. Here's the funny thing. If you go back into my um, yearbook, you got a second? I'll show you. Yeah, yeah. Hang right here. Yeah, this, yes. I know right where it's yes, at. Yes, we want I this. I know right where it's yeah. at. Like, what did James want to do back in high school? Right? Oh, this is great. Who would have thought we would see this, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, that's Eastern so cool. Area High School, folks. Right Eastern on. Pennsylvania. Uh, what does it say? You can make me read something without my glasses on. Studio musician. Look what at do you that. want to do? So everything, Look everybody says, what do, you want to do? what do you want to do? Studio musician. I want to be a studio musician. It's what I always wanted to do. Recording, because I think when you record, it's always there, right? It's like if you write a book, maybe some people will buy it, maybe some people won't, but it's always there. So for me, the few times that I would record when I was a little kid, 12, 13, 14, in the first couple of bands, and we would record something, and I'd be like, and I'd show it to my friends and my parents and everybody, they'd be like, well, you know, and, but it, it always, it's always there. So I always was drawn to the idea of being a studio musician. So what happened was I went to Musicians Institute in Hollywood. And right there was where I got the first opportunity to play in a professional studio and record there. And that was very rewarding. So right after that, I started getting into more little local bands that weren't doing much, but they were recording. So I always had that love of recording. And then when, you know, everything opened up now it's like you can buy just the you know the right equipment and your sound can be better than what they had in the 60s and 70s by far so now you can swap files around to people all over the world right there's two websites i work with air gigs and uh, sound better s-o-u-n-d-b-e-t-t-e-r so you go on there you can look up my name people send me files a lot of metal stuff a lot of all kinds of music yeah. i play all kinds yeah. of music on there by that time that I did this, this was eight years ago, nine years ago, I had uh, some other recordings from other people that I've done even around here. And, you know, so I had some jazz, some, some soft stuff, some ballads. So where, where, where can they find you if they're looking? Thomas Amoriello, and he hires some of the top musicians too. So I got to be on a song with um, Vinny Apice, oh, drummer nice. from, yeah. from Sabbath, yeah, and Dio, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. all of that. So he's like, so James, we're going to do an EP, and uh, you know, this is who the players are. I'm like, oh, great. So, but he's got phenomenal singers. So Nick Marino, the singer, this goes way back, years before I saw Ingve Malmsteen's show, and I'm there, I'm like, of course, I appreciated Maestro. He was doing great. I'm like, he was everything you would expect, but I'm watching the singer. 
the singer was wailing, playing keyboards, and just had this, this voice that he stole the night for me. Very so nice. the next day I talked to all my friends. How was the Yngwie concert? How was the Yngwie concert? I'm like, the singer was great. I don't know who he is, but he was really great. Looked him up the next day. Anyway, so as time goes on, Thomas Moriello, he asked me to, to uh, play on some of his music. And I get the files, and I'm like, I know that singer. And it was Nick Moreno. And so here I got to play based to some of the songs that he was singing on. And I'm like, wow, I just I love his voice. Yeah. I love the fact that this kind of community brings you together to, to maybe play with some people you wouldn't expect to. And to have some surprises, and that was definitely a surprise. And right on, uh, loved right it. Right on. If you could be in, this is a. I got. I have to give credit here. This is a that metal show question. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I have to give credit. Uh -huh. Number one, if you could be in any other band than the band you're currently in, mm -hmm. playing any instrument or even singing, mm. what band? What instrument? Your eye heap bass. Why? Uriah Heap is the best combination of 70s but still relevant and putting out great music thank thank the lord for yeah. nick box Amen. i just love what he's doing Amen. um i would be because for me there's you're, two bass you're players sticking, you're sticking with the bass yeah oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. okay yeah, yeah. there's okay. A, there's two bass players i would love to emulate right and so without a doubt geezer butler from black sabbath would, would, would be one but gary thane the original, one of the original bass players from the 70s think, lineup, the early 70s. And no you're one mentions that guy. Gary Thane. So wow. to be on stage and to play his lines, I yeah. mean, I would love to do it next to Lee Kerslake. But yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but that would be the biggest thrill for me, to play some of Tony Iommi's riffs with him and to be in your eye heap. Right on, right on. Yeah. Very good answer, good answer. Okay, and the second one is other than happy birthday, because you can't pick that one. <laughs> what song do you wish you wrote? Do I wish I wrote? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I've said that. Like, oh, man, I wish I wrote that. I say that all the time here with my wife. <laughs> like, man, I wish I wrote that. Um, okay, I'm going to say one commercially and then one from my heart. Okay. Okay. I want to know what love is by Foreigner. Oh. I wish I'd have written that. That's one of the best songs written. The other one, My Heart is Hole in the Sky by Black Sabbath. Oh, I love that song. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. A bit Great of a song, a, yeah. A bit of a you know difference there, but yeah. That's that's what you got. My favorite Sabbath album, Sabotage. Oh, Sabotage. So yeah. I'd be playing it right now if we uh, Yeah, I, yeah. If I had some internet connection. Right, right. <laughs> and it's got I a see 90, a ninety three on the three, top. So yeah, yeah, it should be good. Oh, let me get glasses. Screw pole. My yeah. mother is still alive. She's 92. And uh, Angela and I are going to fly back to see her in Pennsylvania uh, next month. I have one older brother. Okay. And he was very influential in my music life because yeah. he's the one that had all the cool music Black Sabbath, Uriah Heep, Led Zeppelin, The Who, uh, Sly and the Family Stone. I mean, yeah. all the, he had all yeah. the cool stuff. Remember the Columbia Record House? Yep, yep. I so still he, owe them money. <laughs> Hopefully, it's just a penny. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so he was a huge influence on me. And he bought me my first guitar. Yeah, you said that in the in the sit down interview that mm -hmm. he did that. What mm -hmm. was your first guitar? Yeah. Do you remember what brand? Yeah, Toke, that really, really cheap Toke something. Toke, Tokai, Tokai something. Huh. Uh, which are actually kind of valuable now from the 70s. Oh, sure, of course. Um, and what, what do you play now? What do you play? Well, let me tell you a story about that oh, one first. Okay, though. please, please. Because I, I got it and I loved it and I played it. And I learned how to play guitar because of that guitar and my brother. And then I got into a band where we played mostly The Who. So we played for a frat party at Lafayette College one time, and I smashed it. So that's the story of that guitar. And how old were you when you were playing a frat party? 13. 13. We see. got paid in beer. Well, Sorry, Mom. Say, uh, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, I never right. told you that, but we got paid in beer at the frat party at Lafayette High, uh, Lafayette University. <laughs> well, I just got you in trouble with your mom. I'm sorry, Mom. I didn't mean to get that out there. She knows I'm okay now. Right. She knows <laughs> I, I turned out okay, Mom. But yeah, we got paid in beer and I got 
more than my uh, worth worth out of it. Right really. on, right on. <laughs> hey, I'm going to take a minute and I'm yes. going to check on the lasagna. Okay. Because it's it's like a woman. Sit. You got to check in on her once in a while. Make and sure I, she's I'm, okay. I'm, that's just your amazing charm there. Right, right. That's it. No, dude, it's because I can cook. <laughs> My wife loves me so much. I mean, for many reasons, but right. I'm very handy. Yeah. Like today, before you guys came here, I had to hang a mirror. And it's not like you stick a hole in the wall and hang the mirror. This is a very complicated mirror. You had It had six holes. Yeah, we have a mirror that had a mirror like that. Too. And she's like, honey, you got company coming over. We should have a mirror in the bathroom. I'm like, okay, can you hang the mirror? <laughs> yeah, I can hang the mirror. Oh, I got a new mirror. Let's pull the old one down. I got a new one. <laughs> all right, all right, sure, honey. And in between all of this, I patched a hole, sanded it down, painted it, made six new holes, leveled it, put it up, and there you go. Right on. Well, so Bob, she... Bob Vila would be proud. <laughs> And here is the final product, a Mr. James Pulley. Oh, My Italian's not fine. that good. And I keep messing up your band's name. I'll never get that right. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> so we just pulled this out of the oven. It smells amazing. It looks amazing. And we shall pour some Chianti. Yes. Uh, we have some fresh bread here. Oh. Uh, we can tear that up and we can dig in and see if this tastes as good as it smells, which I'm sure it will. Talk about a full night. I'm digging this. Let's say, yeah, this is amazing. So you want to cut it in an angle because it's more surface space on the bread. I usually like mine in perfect octagon shape. So if you could kind of whip it up like an octagon, I'd be mm. happy. No, nope, right on that, sir. <laughs> All salute. Right. Uh, salute. Thank you, guys. Thank you Thanks so for much. Thank including me in the first show. Festivities. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Rush was amazing. Let's amazing. have some lasagna. Yes, yes. Yeah. You got the first Black Sabbath concert. You got the Pink Floyd. Mm. David Lee Roth, Eat Him and Smile Tour. Yeah. Oh, God, that was amazing. Are you kidding me? Because, you know, who knew who Steve Vai was? Uh, you know, oh, oh, right. right, 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 right. And who, uh, Greg Bissonette? Yeah, Greg Bissonette. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. That, that was an amazing. Okay. Guy. Yeah, those guys were just I, I'm with you on that. They were wild. Just in, I've never seen anything like that. Never, ever. Oh, really? So they yeah. really, it was like the videos. They yeah. brought it. Yeah. They really brought oh, it. Oh, my God, did they ever? It was unreal. This is very cheesy. It's very cheesy. I don't know. The fifth one, I guess. You know what? I'm, I'm better with a, a larger kind of media with this, but we'll just, we'll just oh, bring no, it out like that. That's beautiful. That's, oh, look at that, people. Oh, my gosh. Oh. For you. Take this for no. For you, please. <laughs> Eat, enjoy. Manja. 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 Give that to Claudia. That was for her. Okay. This is yours. Mm. Right on. Yes. Look at you uh, bringing the bread and the wine. Look at look at you. Look at this, <laughs> dude. This is unreal. <laughs> this is so amazing. Costico. It's, it's so Italian. Much. Costico. Mm. Mm. How are we doing? This is amazing. This is the best lasagna I've ever had. I'm not kidding. This is unreal. This you come from unreal. a line of gourmets, so. I do. You know, but I, it's your sauce. It's I appreciate sauce. it. It's just, it's, it's my version. You yeah, know? It's the sauce. It's my it, version. This is amazing. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. This is James signing off. I had a lot of fun. Uh, thanks for eating my lasagna. It was not.